In this video, we will look at the quick hull method to compute the convex hull of a set of points in a plane. The quick hull works similar to the quick sort. Let us consider these 12 points in a plane. The quick hull algorithm identifies two extreme points according to the x coordinate. In this case, the point B has the smallest x coordinate, so it is one of the extreme points. Let us call the point B as P1, and the other point is K, which has the largest x coordinate. Let us call this point K as P2. These two extreme points, P1 and P2, are part of the convex hull. Then the other points in the set are divided based on the line segment between points P1 and P2. All the points to the left of the line segment is known as the upper hull, and all the points to the right of the line segment is known as lower hull. Both the upper hull and the lower hull includes the points P1 and P2. Then the convex hull for the upper hull and the convex hull for the lower hull is computed using the divide and conquer algorithm called as hull. The union of these two convex hull is the overall convex hull. So let us compute the convex hull for the upper hull. To compute the convex hull for the upper hull, we select a point P from the points in the upper hull. Let us consider point C as point P. Then the area formed by points P1, P2 and P is computed. In the same way, we select another point. Let us consider point D as point P. Then the area formed by the points P1, P2 and P is computed. Then we select another point. Let us consider point A as point P and the area formed by points P1, P2 and P is computed. Now this way we select a point P from the points in the upper hull and compute the area between points P1, P2 and P. Then we choose the point P with the largest area. Let us say that the point D which is picked as point P has the largest area among the points in the upper hull. Now the idea of picking point P which has the largest area is that all the points within this area will not be the extreme points and can be discarded. So we discard the points H, L, J, E and F which are enclosed within the area between the points P1, P2 and P which is the point D. Now this point D which is point P becomes point P3 and is part of the convex hull. Then the points in the upper hull are divided based on the line segment between points P1 and P3. All the points to the left of the line segment P1 and P3 is known as upper hull and all the points to the right of the line segment P1 and P3 is known as lower hull. Both the upper hull and the lower hull includes the point P1 and P3. So let us compute the convex hull for this upper hull for the line segment P1 and P3. To compute the convex hull for the upper hull for the line segment P1 and P3, we select a point P from the points in the upper hull for the line segment P1 and P3. Let us consider point C as the point P. Then the area formed by points P1, P3 and P is computed. Now, since the point C is the only point in this upper hull for the line segment P1 and P3, so the area between points P1, P3 and P is the largest area. And there are no more points in the upper hull for the line segment P1 and P3, which are enclosed in this area. So the point C, which is point P, becomes point P4 and is part of the convex hull. Now let us look at this lower hull for the line segment P1 and P3 and compute the convex hull for this lower hull for the line segment P1 and P3. We select a point P from the points in the lower hull for the line segment P1 and P3. Let us consider point A as point P because that's the only point in the lower hull for the line segment P1 and P3 and all the other points are already discarded. Then the area formed by points P1, 
P3 and P is computed. Now, since the point A is the only point in this lower hull for the line segment P1 and P3, so the area between points P1, P3 and P is the largest area. And there are no more points in lower hull for the line segment P1 and P3, which are enclosed in this area. So the point A, which is the point P, becomes point P5 and is part of the convex hull. Now we are left with this lower hull for the line segment P1 and P2. So let us compute the convex hull for this lower hull. To compute the convex hull for the lower hull, we select a point P from the points in the lower hull. Let us consider point G as point P. Then the area formed by points P1, P2 and P is computed. In the same way, we select another point. Let us consider point I as point P. Then the area formed by points P1, P2 and P is computed. So this way, we select a point P from the points in the lower hull and compute the area between points P1, P2 and P. Then we choose the point P with the largest area. Here, the point I, which is picked as point P, has the largest area among the points in the lower hull. So we discard the point G, which is enclosed within the area between points P1, P2 and P, which is point I. Now this point I, which is point P, becomes point P6 and is part of the convex hull. Now at this stage, we have computed the convex hull for both the upper hull and the lower hull. The points P1, P6, P2, P5, P3 and P4 are the points of the convex hull. And this is how the convex hull is computed using the quick hull algorithm. Let us analyze the quick hull method. If there are n1 points in upper hull, then picking the point P, which has the largest area, can be done in O of n1 times. Then the partitioning or dividing the points into upper and lower hull can also be done in O of n1 times. Then merging the upper and lower hull can be done in O of 1 time. Therefore, for n points, the recurrence relation T of n is 1 when n is 1. And let n1 and n2 denote the sizes of the upper and the lower hull. So when n1 plus n2 is less than equal to n, T of n is T of n1, that is the time taken by the upper hull, plus T of n2, that is the time taken by the lower hull, plus O of n, that is the time taken for dividing the points between upper and the lower hull. Now, this recurrence relation T of n is similar to the quick sort algorithm. Therefore, the average time taken by the quick hull will be O of n log n. And this is when the division of n points between the upper and lower hull is nearly even. So, in average case, the quick hull takes O of n log n under the assumption of almost equal distribution of n points between upper and the lower hull. And when the n points are unevenly distributed in upper and lower hull, then in worst case, the time complexity will be O of n square. This happens when the partitioning at each level of recursion is highly uneven between the upper and the lower hull. So to summarize, the problem of computing the convex hull can be solved using the quick hull algorithm, which is similar to the quick sort algorithm. The quick hull method uses divide and conquer approach to divide the points recursively into upper hull and the lower hull and compute the upper hull and lower hull and combine the results to get the overall convex hull. The time complexity of the quick hull in average case is O of n log n, when the points are evenly distributed between upper and the lower hull. And in worst case, the complexity is O of n square. This is when the points are unevenly distributed between the upper and the lower hull in each recursion. So this is what is all about computing the convex hull using the quick hull algorithm.